Tis the season. That's right. We are getting ready to kick it off and we're kicking off what, what, I, what we all consider one of our favorite times of year and that's either elk hunting or rut hunting bull moose. But I'm going to give you take a couple minutes and just go through some simple calls. Now I've been hunting elk the majority of my life started in the mid 80s and really haven't missed much of a season since then. And it's a lot of years. The majority of my hunting back then, you know, and, and through the years was on my own, uh, either was public land or I got permission on private land. So I had to learn a lot by myself or, you know, I went to some of the old veterans, you know, in, from Bowhunter Magazine and all the other guys and, and talked to them and, and they helped me out. And I'm gonna tell you the best way to learn is to get out in that field. And one of the biggest things to do is understand and listen to the game because the game is the best instructor out there. Through the years, you know, whether you're turkey hunting, elk call, whatever it is, whatever call you're doing, we sort of gather years and years of goodies. Let's talk about the simple ones. You know, you start with an array of calls. Like for example, we got our reeds. Real simple, but a lot of people sometimes just can't get you stayed up, up in their mouth. So they go to either a squeeze call, and experiment with it. You could see as you apply the pressure with your thumb, you could drag that out like a cow or chirping. Then you can go to some other mouth call with a reed there. And they've got all these little, you are able to adjust the tone so one call can do a lot of different ones. Pop it off. Then you could go to another different type. You apply pressure with your finger. What I really like is when I, as I do my array of calls and I have my favorites, sometimes what I like, I like the squeeze call. I like to go with two different, defi definite different tones. And then I go to my read because I can bugle, I can chuckle, I could do all that stuff. The other thing, please remember, don't try to be the biggest, baddest bull in the area. Guys would come in and they would sound like the biggest, baddest, toughest bull in the world. They didn't even know that the biggest bull in there was a five by six or a five by five. He had 18 cows. Why in the world, when he hears it sounds like a monster, is he gonna leave his girls to come fight you? It's not gonna happen. He's gonna go and hook all his girls and take them over the mountain to where he has a more secure area. He doesn't wanna lose the girls during the rut. In a preseason situation, instead of going in there sounding like the biggest, baddest bulls, just grab grab one of your calls and do a raspy. You don't need to sound like a big tough bull. You gotta remember something. In most all wild game situations, curiosity is what kills the cat. Remember, there's no real scientific way. The best way to do is get in there and learn to communicate. You hear that cow do something, give it right back to her. Don't try to come up with a different call. You already hear them. They're telling you what to do. Just like that old raspy old hen during turkey season. You know what it is. She starts yelping hard. You yelp right back at her. What happens? She lifts her head and she starts coming in. Well, when she's coming in, who's she bringing? Mr. Gobbler. Same scenario, guys. You know what, you could go with any type of tubes. You can go with just a straight tube. You can add like a big bellow on the end. I've experimented through the years with everything. I mean, you're gonna laugh at this one. What does this look like? <laughs> yeah, buddy, it's a plunger. <laughs> The bottom line, especially if you're, you, you know, you, you're going in, if you've got an, if you're hunting with an outfit and your guide's probably going to put you in the forefront and he's going to draw back as he's getting in and you're making the approach and you could hear that you were working with elk, he's going to have you go forward. Always check the wind, always check the wind. And as he's going to step back and he's going to try to work that bull away, paying more attention to him. So he's going to come walking by you to go find who's calling. Remember, elk going through the brush, they ain't quiet. So as you're walking through and you're making, maybe you're breaking some, you're stepping on leaves, you're breaking some branches, just grab a little, and then, you know, change it up a little bit. Now, 
Now what you've got is you're simulating elk coming through the brush. Maybe take your bow or hit a branch and you know rub a little bit. The crazy thing is, is the more you hear, the more you're around these animals, the more you'll understand certain different calls at certain different times. But if you learn one thing from us today, if you just replicate, replicate the sounds that you hear, you'll be amazed at how they come to you.